In the previous video, we learned how to differentiate a function of the form y equals ax to the power of n. And we learned that it, this is just an extension of our original formula, which says that to find the derivative, we multiply by the power and then reduce the power by 1. And we saw that this worked out in exactly the same way as it did in our very first video, where we used a slightly simpler formula, which says exactly the same thing, that whenever we want to get the derivative, we multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. So in this video, what I want to talk about is what happens if y equals some constant a. So we know how to deal with a multiplied by x to some power, but what if there is no x? What if it's just a? Well, the answer is that dy dx will be equal to 0 in all cases, regardless of the value of a. So if y is some constant, then dy dx will be 0. Now the reason for that will be shown in our first example. So let's say we're given the function y equals 2, and we're asked to differentiate this function. So what is dy dx? Well, the answer that I'm expecting is 0, but why is that the answer? And the reason is because this 2, well, that's going to be equal to 2 multiplied by 1, because any number multiplied by 1 is itself. But 1 is equal to x to the power of 0, because any number to the power of 0 is 1. So 2 is equal to 2 multiplied by x to the power of 0. Then to differentiate this, we multiply by the power and then reduce the power by 1. So we will multiply by 0 and then reduce the power of x by 1 to minus 1. But now we have 0 multiplied by something, and anything multiplied by 0 is just equal to 0. So given y equals any number, the derivative of y will be 0. So let's try some more examples. Let's say y equals 4, then what is dy dx? Well, y is a constant with no x's, so that means dy dx will be equal to 0. And you could work it out this way, but it's much faster to just use the formula and go straight from here to the end. So when y is some constant term, that just means when y is equal to something without any x's in it, then dy dx will be equal to 0. So again, let's try y equals minus 7. Well, again, we have a constant, so dy dx will be equal to 0. And this is an easy pattern here because whenever y is equal to some number, so say y equals 128, then the derivative of that will be equal to 0 for any constant. It doesn't matter which number we pick, this will always be the case. So let's try y equals 346. Well, then dy dx will be equal to 0. So we're just repeatedly using this formula that whenever y is a number, then dy dx will be 0. And another way of saying that is the derivative of any constant is equal to 0. So let's try one more example. y equals 27, then dy dx is again going to be equal to 0. So it doesn't matter what this number is. If y is equal to some number, then its derivative will be 0. Now, before we finish this video, let's do some revision on the things that we've looked at over the last three videos. So we know how to differentiate things like y equals x to the power of 6. We know how to differentiate y equals 4x to the power of 2. We know how to differentiate y equals 3x. We know how to differentiate y equals 7. We know how to differentiate y equals 14. We know how to differentiate y equals 15x. We know how to differentiate y equals 12, and we know how to differentiate y equals 17x. So these are some examples that I'm going to go through. I encourage you to pause the video now and try them all yourself, but I'm going to go through these examples 
and we will see how to differentiate each one of those using one of the techniques learned in the last three videos. So we're starting with y equals x to the power of 6. Well, to differentiate this, what we want to do is we want to multiply by the power and then reduce the power by 1. So dy dx will be equal to 6x to the power of 5. Next, if we're given y equals 4x squared, then dy dx will be calculated by multiplying by the power, 2, and then reducing the power by 1, which will be 1. So here we're going to have 2 times 4, which is 8, and that's multiplied by x to the power of 1, which is just x. Next, if we're given y equals 3x, then dy dx will be equal to 3. And the reason I know that is because in the previous video, when we started out, we did y equals 8x, and we showed how this is equal to 3x to the power of 1. So we're going to multiply by 1, then reduce the power to 0, and the x will disappear. So we'll be multiplying 3 by 1 and 3 by 1 again, so we're just left with the 3. So whenever we've got y equals some number times x, and it's not x to a high power, it's just times x, then we'll just be left with the number. Next, we have y equals 7. Well, this is just a constant. So that means that dy dx is equal to 0. Next, we have y is equal to 14. Again, this is just a constant. So again, dy dx will be equal to 0. So for any constant term, that means any term that doesn't have an x in it, dy dx will always be 0. Next, we have y equals 15x. So dy dx should be equal to 15, but let's go through and check this manually before we just start using that as a formula. So that's going to be equal to 15 times x to the power of 1. So to differentiate that, we'll have our 15x to the 1. We want to multiply by the power, that's 1, and reduce the power by 1. So we're going to have 1 times 15 times x to the power of 0, which is 1. So we're left with 15. So this is what I was saying over here, that whenever we have y is equal to some number times x, and this is not x to a power, this is just x, then the derivative will just be equal to that number. Next, we have y equals 12, and 12 is just a constant, so the derivative is equal to 0, because 12 is just a constant, that just means 12 is just a number, it's something that's always the same, 12 is always equal to 12, so it is constant. And finally, we're going to have y is equal to 17x, so dy dx will be equal to 17, because if we have y equals some number times x, then the derivative will just be that number. So now we know how to differentiate several simple functions. In the next video, we will look at some more complicated functions that arise when we add simple functions together. And we will learn how to differentiate these.